Welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Hello, my name is Ryan Olson, and today we're going to be carving this ballerina Christmas ornament. So hold on to your hats, boys and girls. It's going to be a fun one. Get your knives and gouges out. It's going to be a very Merry Christmas on that Christmas tree. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, today is Saturday, December the 16th, 2023, and uh, this is the last meeting of our 2023 year, so I uh, just want to welcome you all in today. I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, we have an exciting meeting today. We've got uh, Ryan Olson coming to us from Utah. Uh, he's going to be doing a demonstration on uh, a ballerina carving ornament. Um, he's going to be talking a little bit about his upcoming class, and uh, we'll be turning it over to him shortly. I uh, want to remind you all, we won't have any meetings for the rest of the year. Uh, our next meeting will be on January 6th. Uh, Morgan's Wood Carvings is going to be coming in uh, on the 6th. And then Leg and Lippard's going to be in on the 13th. So uh, we've got a couple of meetings already scheduled. I'll be working hard in the next two weeks to get uh, some other meetings scheduled in January and February. Uh, so watch your social media um, for our upcoming schedule. I uh, want to remind you about workshops that's coming up. We need to go ahead and try to reach out to the instructors and get signed up for these. Uh, Janet Cordell is going to be doing a horse bust uh, starting January the 5th. Again, Ryan Olson, who's on with us today, is going to be doing a uh, carving pretty females with character class on January 6th. And again, you'll hear more about that from Ryan here in a few minutes. Uh, Dave Stetson, who is on our meeting today, uh, is going to be doing a class on January the 20th on carving elderly couples. Um, so we look forward to that. Go ahead and reach out to the instructor, find out uh, what you need to do to sign up, see if you need to buy rough outs and get those purchased so that you can get in these classes. Uh, having said all that, I know uh, Dave Stetson's on standby. Uh, he's going to give us uh, some wood carving words of wisdom today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dave. Uh, let's hear what Dave has to say for us. And Cora Impardo. It's Latin. Uh, there was a guy in Italy, went by the name of Dilo de Vicchio Bonorate Simone. His first name was Michelangelo. Uh, so that, he's better known by that. But, uh, the last thing he said before dying at age 87 was, I am still learning. And Cora Impardo. And I think if we can relate to what the masters be, that have gone before have gone through and what they've done and the sacrifices that they've paid, that we can learn from them. And we can always be learning. And that's the beauty of the International Association of Woodcarvers and the Wood Carving Academy, that learning is easily attainable. Thank you, Dave. We appreciate that. I uh, did see Bob Hershey asked there a few minutes ago if, uh, if that is always backwards. I think your sign when you read it, uh, when you hold it up to the screen, it was backwards. So uh, it's okay, though. I think we got the message. Um, don't forget about Wood Carving Academy. If you want to sign up, uh, you can learn at your own pace. Uh, you can sign up with a subscription for them uh, one month, three months, and a year. Uh, as these workshops go by, they put those out on, uh, on Wood Carving Academy. So if you see something in the past that you wanted to take and you weren't able to get into class, uh, there's a good possibility that information is out there for you. So make sure you go out, check out their website, and uh, get signed up for them so that you can go out and you can learn uh, at your own pace. Uh, don't forget about Healthy Knives. They're a big uh, supporter of ours. Uh, they donate knives so that we can continue to have these meetings. Uh, I'll have some auctions coming up at the beginning of the year. Again, we use the funds from those auctions to uh, continue these meetings. So uh, make sure that uh, you tune in in January and uh, you'll get a, uh, you'll have the ability, I guess, to, uh, to pick up a healthy knife and help the in International Association of Wood Carvers continue. So uh, having said all that again today with us, uh, CCA member Ryan Olson uh, coming to us from Utah. Uh, he has a class coming up January 6th. He's going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, he's going to be doing a demonstration on uh, carving a ballerina. So, Ryan, thank you for coming in today. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you, and uh, we look forward to seeing what you're sharing with us today. 
Um, thank you. What a, that was, a, that, and that was a great introduction, Dave. I'm telling you, that is a huge thing, continuing to learn. They say you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And uh, there's there's been years when I've looked at my carvings and I've thought, you know, I am worse this year than I was the year before because uh, I didn't because I didn't learn. And spending spending time with other people and and learning from others is always a great thing to do. I'm coming to you live today from my kitchen, and uh, I've got there's a little bit of sunshine coming through the back windows. Um, but it, I was thinking it, it may, it's almost like a Barbara Streisand movie. It's like a, it's like the soft screen. It takes a couple of years off my face. I thought, I thought it might, it might help the whole thing. Um, I wanted to talk to, to y'all just a little bit about the class coming up. And as, as they were mentioning, there's a few great classes this month on, uh, the Wood Carving Academy. Janet Cordell's amazing. And of course we know, we know Dave does incredible things and I'm, I'm doing a class on female a female busts, and I'll tell you a little history about this. So I've been I've been doing a lot of females, and I I worked I worked for I was working for just being able to carve beauty, and it took me a, three or four years to even be able to a, really approach it. And then I got there, and then I thought, okay, the next step. What's the next step after you can carve after you can carve a a, a pretty female? The next step is to carve a female that's 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 cute, but also has a caricature or character and so um in that class we're going to talk about how to and, and it's it's not easy it's it's similar to uh landing a, a a jet on an aircraft carrier except the aircraft carrier is on fire i mean it's it is it is fairly uh it, it's fairly difficult but i'm trying to simplify it as much as we can um and you know uh, uh, things like this gal you know she's pretty um a matter of fact her name I just carved her the other day. Her name is Butter Teeth. Um, she's all gorgeous, Butter Teeth. And I don't know if that'll get me in trouble. Um, um, as my father-in-law says, she could probably eat peanuts out of a Coke bottle. Um, and but she's still she's still cute, but she's got character. And the one we're going to be starting with in the class is her name is Becky, and it's just a bust. Um, and um, simplified it as much as we could. We're going to be starting with her. We're going to be doing three or four different busts in the class. Um, and, and, um, here's some of the others that we're probably, probably going to be, probably going to be doing, uh, her name's Pixie. She's, she's cute. She's got character. She's also, she's also pretty, but she's, she's got more than just good looks. Uh, I'm doing, a uh, we're probably going to be doing this librarian, the face of this librarian. Um, she's, she's a little bit older, uh, and she's got, you know, why the long face? Um, and I'm hoping if we can get in four, I'm going to try, um, we've got this, uh, barrel racer, uh, too. And, um, her, her cowboy hat's kind of curled up. So the, that is what we're going to be doing in the class and be breaking down, um, breaking down the process and doing a female face and breaking down, designing a female face that, that is, that is cute, but that also has some character. So that's what we're shooting for in the class. If you're interested, um, just email me directly. My email is ryanscaricatures at gmail.com. Uh, and I'll put it right here on this other, uh, on my, on my, let's see. Oh, we, this phone has been, this phone has been turning off. And so I may have to, I may have to uh, kick it, re-kick it on every once in a while. Um, anyway, right here is my email. Let's see, are we, are we upside down? I think we're upside We're down. sideways. We're upside down, sideways. There we go. There you go. There we go. And it's Ryan's Ryan's caricatures at gmail.com. And you can also just go directly to the Wood Carving Academy to get uh, to get the information. There you go. So you can write it down. I think I finally got it. And today, um, that's that's enough of that. Um, today we're going to be today we're going to be doing a carving of a little ballerina, and if you've got a if you've got a daughter, you've got a granddaughter in your life that you think that you think would enjoy this. This would be a really fun one to carve. And um, in designing in designing her, I tried to keep I tried to do something where where she would be fairly simple to carve for us, 
but would would also be really fun. the 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 biggest design um, feature, design characteristic in this is the skirt, and it's a it's the flowing kind of a tutu. I wanted to simplify it, and and so um, it, we didn't put a ton of ruffles. I mean, you could you could put more ruffles in it if you wanted, like that. But we're gonna we're gonna put just probably four big ruffles in it to get the flow. And then she is wearing a Santa hat that comes down over her ears. And that simplifies because we don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about carving ears. We don't have to worry about carving hair. Um, we can just, we can just carve that, that face under the hat. And um, we're, I really simplified this face. And as you're carving her, you could go as simple as you want. Um, I would suggest maybe on your first one, even doing it without the face, just work on carving, just work on carving the body and maybe leaving the face round. And that would make a, a really fun ornament. And then as you get more brave, start working on putting some profile in the face. And um, there's something really uh, that that is really cute about the fuzzy of the hat against uh, against her her um, the beauty of that face. And then the the flowing of the dress, you know, if you're going to carve females, not only do you need to be a wood carver, but you need to be a costume designer. And so put some, I put some green and some red and some white, and then I even put some pink on her on her sh uh, shoes. They call that being on point. I put some pink in there because that is so characteristic of a ballerina. Even though it clashes, my daughter told me it clashes with the green and the and the and the red, but it really is classic ballerina. So nothing says Christmas like the Nutcracker. And um, she's, you know, kind of, we've got a kind of a, a Nutcracker ballerina. Okay. Um, so let's get, let's get rolling here. Um, I, if you guys saw, there was a, uh, there was a pattern um, that Blake, Blake, um, sent and it was posted everywhere you can find it and you can shape it to whatever size you want you know and i get people all the time say is that a two inch stock is that a i think this happened to be gosh as i measured it probably about it was a, ended up being about two maybe two and a half inches um that two two wide is what i'm doing but make it whatever size you want you don't want it to be too big it'll make your christmas tree sag um but you got to know the smaller it is the more difficult it is to do features um, so on your, when you're doing most any blank, um, don't stress yourself out about, about the size, make it the size you want and, and adjust, adjust to, to what you want. Um, and, um, and as you're, as you're cutting it out, if you follow the blank, make sure that the two, two, the front view and the side view line up. That's pretty important. Um, the the main the main part to line up is the front view and the side view on that so that the skirt you get this you get this square um as we go today i was going to tell you that as we go i'm going to be asking y'all some questions um and as i ask you some questions um i want to have you go ahead and type in uh type in your type in your responses and the questions that i'm going to ask you are uh, hopefully they can help you maximize your love for what you're doing and maximize your love for this, for this hobby, because let's face it for almost all of us in this room, except maybe two or three, this, including me, this is a hobby. This is something we do because we're, we love it and we're passionate about it. The, the French word amateur, amateur, which it just means one who loves, it just means one who loves the thing. And so as an amateur, I consider myself an amateur in that I just love to carve and, uh, it's it's a it's a hobby that I try to keep pure because it's it's such a special thing to me. So anyway, I'm going to ask you some questions and I want you to think about it and then type in your answers. And and hopefully this will get you thinking about wood carving, maybe in a little different way. The first question for everybody is what is the most fun you have ever had carving? Maybe or, so maybe were you and when you had the most fun, were you alone were you in a class with somebody? Were you teaching a class? Were you were you just hanging out with a bunch of friends carving? Were you inside? Were you outside? Were you um, where were you? What were you doing? What was the most fun you ever had carving? Think about it and uh, type it in. We want to see what was the most fun you ever had carving. Okay, so we're going to start while you guys are typing in the answer to that question. We're going to start on the skirt 
we're going to divide it into three um, on on every side here. One, two, three, and it doesn't have to be exact. You know, if you're a if you do your trigonometry, we're going to try to make this uh, skirt circular. And I don't know what the trigonometry formula would be for dividing this up, but you know what? Thirds seem to work better for me than quarters. So what the heck? We're going to go for it. We're going to divide it into. Uh, <laughs> Cheryl Gerard, your hot tub people, you nailed those, Cheryl. That was one of your most fun you've had, Carbon. That makes me happy, Cheryl. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Buckeye Wood Carvers teaching Boy Scouts at a summer camp. When they see the possibilities, they just push the limits. My first day, my last, my last carving was the most fun I had with my dad on a family vacation. He got several of us a carving lesson. So sometimes with family, it looks like a lot of people have had their most fun with family. Um, I'm just knocking off these. Um, I'm just knocking off these corners that I just drew out in thirds. We're going to just round this. We're just going to round her two two is what we're doing right now. So now that I've got those corners knocked off, I'm gonna knock off these corners and make somewhat a circle. It doesn't have to be a exactly, um, it doesn't have to be an exact circle, but we're, we're starting with the circle. The beach on vacation, David Wilson likes carving on the beach. That is one I've never tried. Carving on the beach, that would be pretty fun. Every time I grow as a carver, it is, but a new healthy day is pretty awesome. Brett, we're going to, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about, uh, about that and about purchasing tools. And, and because you know what, there's a lot of us that that brings us joy. Uh, Dean, the first time I did a demo in the monthly club meeting. So Dean, the first time that he, he taught was based on John Overby's flat plane. So Dean enjoyed the teaching aspect of it that had the most fun he's had, you know, it's different. It's different for all of us, but really, really think about what the most fun you've ever had is. And and maybe think about what you were carving when you had that much fun, who you were with, where you were. Um, and why did you have why did you have so much fun? For me, for me, I was thinking about as I was preparing this and I was asking myself these questions, um, I was thinking about what was the most fun I've had this year. And the most fun that I have had all year was carving out in my backyard all by myself under a shade tree and I was carving something totally pretty pretty worthless I was carving a a copy of a copy it was a um, PJ Driscoll had copied one of Chris Hammock's cowboys with his hands in his pockets and his elbows sticking out and uh, he had given it to me and I loved it and I thought I'm going to carve one like that and so I uh I made a pattern of it just for me and just for fun. And I sat out there with no purpose other than to just sit out there. And um, for me, carving something without a purpose uh, was pretty fun because I have to carve with purpose for classes. And so carving at a large event like Midway in Lebanon with awesome instructors outdoors on the deck every day. Okay, I'm drawing four lines now, one directly in the front. My pen's not working very well. One on the side, one on the back, and one on this side. And I'm going to start, gosh, that pen, you can't see that. Here, let's see if I can get this pen going. There we go. Okay, there we go. You can see where I drew the four lines. Um, I'm going to start anytime I get a chance to carve with fellow car fellow carver. Johnny Overby likes to carve with fellow carvers. Just carving my third year, and I've had fun finishing carving with no blood sacrifices. Um, I'm going to take this is just a number. This is just a number nine. I use a lot of number nines, um, and a little bit here. Okay. I'm going to take this number nine and I'm going to go straight in the top of the skirt right here. And I'm starting with a smaller, a smaller gouge so that I can really get in there and remove some wood. And this is just kind of getting it started so that I can come in with a bigger gouge and round this out. I'm really going to be taking quite a bit of wood off of this, off of this tutu. Going through on all four of these. 
And this is where a cut like this is where some strength comes in handy. Um, it's also a dangerous cut because I, I don't have it anchored as well as I should. It's where this is a cut I really, really want to have my glove on. Okay. So I've gone through on all four of those on the top, and you can see I've taken quite a bit of wood out. Okay, the next question for everybody. Where do you like to carve? I want you to all think about your favorite place to carve. What, um, where have you had the most fun carving? Were you, were you carving? Do you have a shop where you just love to sh carve in the shop? By the way, I'm going to a now. I'm going to a bigger, a giant number nine. Um, do you love to carve in your wood shop? Do you like to carve um, at a buddy's house? Do you like to take your RV up into the mountains? Do you like to carve in your backyard? Do you like to, I personally, I like to carve in my, at my kitchen counter. That's what I'm doing right now. I don't know why, but that's, I just, I guess I just like to be in the middle of everything. And so I, I like to carve in my kitchen counter. Do you like to, uh, do you like to carve? Do you like to travel the country and take classes all over the country? Do you like to carve in front of the, in front of the a movie? Do you like to, where do you like to carve? Go ahead and type it in. We want to see where everybody where everybody enjoys carving. I live in Arizona, so I take off into the mountains. My basement is my carving shop, says Dean Irving. <laughs> I usually carve at my desk. That's the best place for me, says Cheryl Gerard. My carving setup at home, Dave Stetson. I'm not even going to read his. It's a bathroom. Favorite place to carve is my recliner in front of the couch. Bud Adams says my shop. Um, so, so looks like, I mean, that is really, there's as many different answers. My shop, when I'm with others, I carve in the kitchen table um, first. My second is my shop. Uh, fur, except when my brother hung a deer uh, in the fur shed. <laughs> I'm going... I'm going underneath now, opposite of where I went on the top. This is to get that ruffle look going up and down. In my carving room in front of YouTube carvers. There you go. So I'm gonna carve, I'm gonna carve here, or gouge in here, I'm gonna gouge in here and here. This is the low points kind of opposite of where I did them on top. And this is to just get the flow of that, the flow of that choo choo. We'll see you later, sweetheart. My wife, my wife's heading out. She's going to watch my daughter at a cheerleading competition. My my youngest daughter is a senior in high school, and she's uh, she's cheering today in a competition over in Nampa. And and uh, Amy's going to watch her. And I'm I'm in trouble because I'm I'm going, but I am going later. So you see how we get that up up and down look here. We're getting that with the skirt. Um, the next question is what do you like to carve? Okay, so what is it that you like to carve? Um, what is it that completely captures your imagination? Do you like to carve something intricate and tedious and um, like chip carving where, you, where you're having to really um, do, some, do a similar thing over and over? Do you like something technical like carving birds? Are you into the mechanical? Are you someone who likes to make marionettes? Uh, do you, uh, I mean, what is your favorite thing to carve? Are you one of those out there people that likes to express themselves through caricature. Um, Cheryl, caricature, I know, and she does it well. What do you like to carve? Mark, caricatures, things that bring me smile, um, <laughs> neckerchief slides, chains, 3D landscapes, uh, human form spirits and whimsical houses, animals, my gnome, <laughs> caricatures, caricatures. Good for you. Ornaments. There's a lot of, there are a lot of people that love to carve ornaments um, at this time of year, I have found. Um, tiny figures that I often give away as a gift. I'm with you on that one. And this, this little ballerina would make, boy, I tell you what, this would light up a daughter or a granddaughter's day, uh, something like this. Especially if she's, if they've seen all your Santa Clauses, you hand them a cute little ballerina. The, the cute thing about this is that that skirt makes it look 
um, it gives it kind of an intricate, it gives it that intricate flowing look. And it's um, caricatures, Robert Martel, car Bob Martel caricatures. Yes. I know, I know so many of these folks. I've seen you around, seen you around the country. Okay, the next question for you is, who do you like to carve with? Now, are you one that you you like to be teaching? And, you know, and some people think, oh, I could never teach. But I'll tell you what, there is always a level that you could teach. There's always a level of wood carvers that you could teach. Whether If you're teaching like beginner, beginner and teaching kids, or if you're teaching the Boy Scouts and helping them with a merit badge, or if you're a higher level carver, um, like we're, we need, we're talking that John Overby, he's in here with us. He needs to be out there going around this country, teaching a whole lot more than he does. Cause he's, a, he's stinking amazing. But where are you, uh, where are you, or who do you like to carve with? Do you like to carve with your buddies? Do you like to carve alone? Do you like to carve and sit and have your have your wife talking to you while while you carve? I mean, what 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 brings you joy there? Who are you, alone. I I'm the same way. I uh, I like to carve alone. And uh, you know, some to some of you that may sound sad, but to me, me in the radio says Dave Wilson. I'm with you, Dave Wilson. I get on there and I say, uh, my dog and my tunes says Ro Ron Burlier. I'm with you. I get there and I say, Alexa, play the Eagles, and then I just uh, and then I just start carving. I like I like groups, says Mark. Okay, so we've got that we've got that skirt fairly well started here. My daughter with my daughter while she's drawing. I love that, Blake. I love that. That's probably why she's such an artist because she did that with you. I enjoy classes, but spend much more time carving alone. Ah, I can relate to that. We're knocking the edges off of the of the legs and just kind of rounding the whole unit of the legs. In solitude, Timmy, in solitude with music, also alone but not by choice, uh, alone with Alexa and my Pandora music. So it looks like a lot of us really enjoy carving alone. Okay, so I am... I'm just rounding. You can see I'm just kind of rounding those, rounding those legs. Show you where I'm at here, and then I'm gonna knock the corners off. I teach a weekly class of twenty. Love doing that, Michael Chamberlain. I've been teaching my pastor lately. That's awesome, Michael. You should be teaching, Michael. You carve really well, man. Um, knocking the corners off of these, off of the, off the torso here. Now, look at how her arms are set up. So her arms are coming, they come down and then they straight down naturally and then they angle forward and then her hands are sitting um, right here kind of uh, very uh, gracefully and then you can see her little thumbs there. And her hands are coming together. It was designed to do the least amount of the least amount of detail work. Um, Cheryl Gerard enjoys carving. She's like me, likes carving by herself. I'm the same. So look at those hands. And you can kind of see how I did them. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm going to uh, bring bring these arms in just a little bit and start angling them this way towards the towards the inside of the of the body. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well as I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw the arms on for you. The front of the arm would be about right here. And then it comes down that way. See how I did that right there. Okay. Front of the arm here. And down that way. Got to put my glasses on. All right. You all ready for your next question? Here we go. Um, what do you like to do with your carvings once you're done with them? Do you like to keep them in a display um, and keep them all together? Do you like to um, give them to friends? Do you like to sell them? Do you put them in a box and never look at them again because you're embarrassed of them? 
do you uh what do you do with your carvings when you're done with them i'm we're i'm interested in what you what you do with them is it what brings you joy does it bring you does it bring you joy to sell your carvings and to get you know get 50 bucks for a carving or whatever or does it bring you joy to give one as a gift does it bring you joy to sneak one under um give one to somebody that you don't know um i love giving them to kids at shows uh giving them away to my friends keep them together um in a box most of them keep them on display i've given away a few um they go they are like my kids i can't get rid of them <laughs> says john robinson <laughs> that's funny i sell most i give nine out of ten of them away i give them away mostly um donate lots of them to fundraising yeah so looks like um looks like a lot of joy is had giving away carvings give them away feels best to me um and and you know what i'm with you um i tuck them in a box until i get a little better sell them and give them to the widow widows uh sell them and the kids at church uh that's cool um think about it really think about what you're going to do with your carvings now um if it if it really brings you joy to set up a table and to and to put price price tag on the carvings and 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 sit at a show and sell them then do it i mean if that if you love to have your carvings there and have people come by and and uh purchase them and uh ask you or you love to haggle and you get a you get a buzz out of making you know a little bit on a carving then do it um if it stresses you out if you don't like sitting there, then don't do it. Um, I'm just, I guess the main reason I'm asking all of these questions is so that you can be a little bit more intentional about what you're doing. Um, nothing wrong with selling some. I totally agree with you. Um, and I haven't, I've never, uh, or I shouldn't say never, but I rarely actively have sold. I've never really, I don't think I have ever set up a, uh, a carving table with price tags on or anything like that. Usually people would, when they offer me something for carving, I'll say, well, we can see what we can do, but it, I've never really actively sold, but I did probably about three weeks ago, I did a live sale um, and sold some things and I got a buzz. I got a buzz. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was fun to be kind of a, my own auctioneer and sell some things. And so I thought, you know, I can see the allure to, I can see the allure to selling some carving. So think about it. Think about what you what you want to do with them, or maybe it's maybe it's a combination of all of those, you know. Um, but I would say this: that setting them in a box and tucking them away, um, no matter how no matter how bad you are, those things would be priceless to somebody out there in your life. You know they would. You know that if they had them, they would cherish them. You know my. My kids, they often talk about some of the carvings that they have of mine. And when, and when they say it, I cringe. I'm like, oh, she has that one. Oh. And, um, but to them, it means the world. They don't know that it's not your best or they don't, they don't care. Um, they, they just know that it's a part of you and a piece of you. So I would say, think about those carvings you have in a box and get them out there. You know, one of the coolest things I ever saw was at the – at the Carbon in the Rocky show that we do, um, Dave uh, Dave set up a booth and he brought a bunch of his carvings that he had. He'd done a, a bunch of them, Dave Stetson, and he he gave out I don't know how many he gave out, but we did he did door prizes and uh, people just walked walked out of there with with his carvings. And if you know him or know of him, you know those things are worth. And, but he found, he decided that he would have the most joy in giving those. He thought, darn it, I carved these. If I want to give them away, I'm going to give them away. And uh, that was one of the coolest things I've seen. I thought that is pretty darn neat. Um, and, I, and I'll bet you there's some of you guys in here that walked away with one of those. That was pretty cool. Um, which, by the way, while I'm here, I'm going to do just a quick little plug for Carving in the Rockies. Uh, carve, in, carve in the Rockies. I know there were a bunch of you that were, I know there were a bunch of you that were there um, last year. Um, and this year, this coming year, the dates are going to be, um, they're going to be, I wrote them down, September 13th, 14th, and 15th in Colorado Springs. So get it on your calendar. 
And if you've never entered that competition, um, you or if you've never um, looked at that competition, go to the go to the CCA website and check out some of the some of the carvings that were entered in there. Um, there were some really great carvings entered in that competition. And um, you can just go to the website and you can see all sorts of pictures. By the way, if you entered one and you haven't yet seen a photo of them, um, my wife and I took all of those pictures and she's quite the photographer. So we've got some great photos of your work that was entered. Oh man, I think we had over, gosh, I think it was over 200 entries this year. And a lot of people said uh, an in-show an in -show competition wouldn't work. But I tell you what, it, it worked and some, I mean, it's the stuff, the quality of the pieces that were entered this year was extraordinary. So there's a quick plug for Carbon and the Rockies. Come and join us. Okay, so I'm getting the arms shaped. You see how they're, they're coming down and then angling forward. Now we got a big old block for a head. We're gonna, we're gonna get that under control. Um, and we're gonna go halfway from the tip of her nose to the back here. And we're gonna draw a little line. And then we're gonna go halfway from there. We're gonna draw another line like that. And that, so halfway from the tip of the nose to the back, we drew one. And then halfway from that to the back, we drew the other. And that's where the little ball from her Santa hat is gonna sit. So that Santa hat's got a big, a big ball. That gives it a little bit of asymmetry, a little bit of movement, and a little bit of interest. And that at Carbon and Rockies next year, will there be three classes following the show? Three, uh, yeah, there will be three, uh, three CCA members. So the classes that Dale Green's talking right about right there is that there's going to be classes on the um, the 16th, 17th, and 18th, and we're going to have three. So this year we're going to have three uh, CCA members doing doing full day classes. So in the in uh, this past year, we, we did half day classes on Saturday and Sunday, like the four hour classes. This year we're doing the Carbon and the Rocky show, the, uh, the Carbon and the Rocky show, the 13th, 14th and 15th. And then the 16th, 17th and 18th, we are going to be doing um, full day classes. So um, watch for, watch for more info on that. And, um, you know, there's there's always great ex instructors with that group. They, boy, um, Ryan, people say carve the head first. Do you agree? So um, with with carving the head first, um, here's what I here's what I here's my philosophy on that. He just asked, do you agree with carving the head first? And I know why they're saying it. People will often carve the head first because they don't want to waste a rough out. They if they're doing a rough out and they're they're fifty percent sure that the that it's gonna the head's gonna turn out, they'll carve the head first so that if it doesn't turn out, they can chuck it. Um, and I would say that that's an okay approach if you're doing a bunch of rough outs and you're wanting to to save your time. But um, I look at every carving as a learning process, and it's okay if the head doesn't turn out. But I think, in my opinion. Um, the the head needs to fit the movement of the head needs to fit in with the rest of the body. I'm going to interrupt myself really quick before I finish answering that. Just drew a center line all the way down the head. I love center lines; it helps me keep symmetry. And then I'm also going to draw the the bottom of the hat line. So um, it's going to come from right here, and it's going to come. Um, it's gonna come from right here down like that. Whoops, nope, go a little further down just a second. Yeah, that hat comes all the way down here. It covers the, this hat covers the hair. She's got her hair, her hair is really in a bun. Um, those ballerinas, they wear their hair in a bun. So she's got her hair up in a bun up under this hat. And then the top of the hat band comes like this. So I had a, when I was studying art in uh, Utah State in 1990, 1990 um, my, I had a, one of my figure drawing teachers. Um, he talked a lot about um, no matter how good you do a hand or no matter how good you do a head, no matter how good you do a face, if it doesn't fit in with the rest of the structure of the carving, if, if, if the movement um, 
if it doesn't work and it doesn't fit in proportionally or whatever with the rest of the carving, it, it's just not going to work. I mean, you could do you could do the best head in the world, but if it doesn't sit on the neck and sit on the body well, um, it's not going to work. So I've been doing I I've been enjoying wood carvings where I where I um, give them a neck. And if you start getting into carving necks, then you just don't have the luxury of just completely carving the head first because you've, uh, or the face first, you've got you've to flow with the whole body. So my answer to that question is, if you watch any carver that, that's been doing it a while that is, uh, that's really comfortable, they are moving all over the carving. And, um, you know, they're, they're, they're doing the, the body and then they're jumping up to the head, back to the body, just kind of how I've done. I started with the skirt and then I started with the arms and the torso. We did the legs and now we're setting in the shape of the head and just moving around. And it may not make a ton of sense to you um, at first, but setting up the overall shape is that's where it's at in answer to your question. By the way, um, we can feel free to, um, before I jump into my next, because I've got some more um, questions to make you think. Um, if anybody wants to unmute and ask a question, I am okay with that. Hey, Ryan, it's Blake. Hey, in your class, um, will they have to purchase any rough outs or is everything going to be done from a block? Hey, thanks, Blake. Um, in the class, we are. Um, I'm actually sending out all of the uh, patterns today. So anybody, there's anybody that's already registered for the registered for the class, and there's actually a lot of you in this room that already have. If you've already registered for the class, expect the patterns via email today. Um, and I'm sending I'm sending the patterns via email. I'm sending tool lists today. I'm sending um, I'm sending. I've got a document that I created, uh, how to succeed in a Zoom class, um, which are some of the best strategies that I've found to get the most out of it. Um, I'm sending today your codes to get into the the uh, the Zoom class through the Wood Carbon Academy. So that, that would all come um, via email uh, today. So there's no, for this particular class, there's no rough out. It's, it's all done um, through a cutout that you do your that you do your do on your own, whether it's whether it's using a bandsaw or um, just um, roughing it and using a knife to get the cutout the best you can. Um, there you go. Any other questions? Okay, I have a question for you guys. Next question. Um, what do you, so in carving, we've got a certain amount of resources uh, for both time and, and money that we could spend on our, this uh, hobby that we love. What do you like to spend your money on? So what gives you a buzz to spend your money on? Do you like spending your money on um, fancy uh, power tools? The, you, are you a tool collector? Does that give you a buzz getting new, new knives? And I'm not, I am not shaming that. I mean, I'm with you. Like, Nothing better than getting a new knife. Matter of fact, that's what I want for Christmas. Is a is is some. I'm talking to Chris Willock, and he's getting me some new stew buys. Um, so, um, what do you like? What what gives you a buzz to spend your money on in this hobby? <laughs> wife, happy wife. You spend your money on your wife, John Robinson. Happy wife, happy life. Okay, Dave Stetson. You spend it on your wife. <laughs> Uh, for sure. New knives. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Zoom classes. <clears throat> knives and quality palm tools. Are you one that likes to stockpile your wood? You like to spend your, you like to spend your, your money on, on like the best quality wood. Um, I joked in the group, I don't sharpen my knives. I just get new ones. <laughs> knives and wood <laughs> all right i'm going to i'm going to set up this face now um we're going to let me let me get let me zoom in on this face tools for sure it's a problem says scott shelton my wife likes knives and gouges for christmas does she really bob a uh, healthy knife so look at this look at this face um let's look at the profile 
So on these to get, let's see, let's get, get it right here. To get a really cute profile, first thing is that nose and the lips need to stick out further than the forehead. So the forehead here, the nose and the lips stick out further than the forehead. Next thing is the, um, and we've got to leave plenty of wood for those lips. Next thing is we we turn that nose up just a little bit to give it just that pixie look. This, this, this is one of my favorite turned up noses I've done. Look at this gal. Let's see, there we go. She's got that, you can see that profile, that, that turned up nose she's got and see how that kind of goes down to that upper lip. And the nose and that lip stick out further than the forehead. Um, that's a, um, but not as bad as Doug Linker says Scott Shelton. <laughs> okay, so to get that turned up nose, um, we're going to, we're the first thing we're doing, we're gonna get these tool marks off the, the face here. Classes, different tools I have tried, supplies, different experiments. New is always fun, isn't it? I don't know that I've ever heard anybody regret spending money on on um, classes. Um, and I don't know that I've ever heard anybody regret spending money on quality tools. I've heard... I've heard people regret spending money on craft tools that just that was bad steel uh, that got taken that way. Make sure you get good steel. Okay, I am let's see what I'm doing here. I am starting to set that nose, set that nose in, and this is where it starts to get tricky. I mean, we, I'm I'm coming in this way, kind of a oh, let's see, I'm out of frame here. Coming straight down the nose and and I'm gliding it out towards the eye to get that round. One of the difficult things about carving female faces is we're carving we're carving round, and um, in some ways that bites the medium. Um, in some ways, uh, round doesn't go with the medium. I mean, you you think about it. If you're carving a if you're carving a cowboy. Um, Big old chips and big old jagged edges fit naturally, but but a ballerina she's she's got a she's got to have a little bit different approach. You can see how that nose is starting to to go there. And another thing on these females, and we'll, we'll talk about about this a lot in the class, is is keeping a fairly narrow chin. Um, the if you've got a if you've got a really thick chin, it, it tends to look masculine. So working on keeping a narrow chin, um, and, and it's easier to it's easier to talk about than it is to do, um, and also a longer narrow narrow neck is also important. See how I've set that see how I've set that nose up there. Any other questions from the group as we're going along here? Feel free to unmute or or Blake if they if you've got any feel free to shout them out. I've got to start looking at my carving a little bit or it's just going to turn into a turn into a narrow mess that I can't fix. Hey so, Ryan, what's your uh, what's your favorite knife when you're doing those those turning cuts? Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll, I've got I've got a few ideas on that. Um, I like if I'm if I'm rolling, I want to have a blade dug that that has some. I don't want one of my flat flat blades. I want a blade that is sharpened with a little bit of round. Um, that way it can roll. If it's one of my if it's one of my flat plane carving blades, um, it won't roll like this. So I I really feel that nothing rolls quite as well as a Helby, um, particularly with this small this small tip. Um, for um, when I'm doing my flat plane, other applications I've got I've got some different favorites. But if I'm if I'm rolling because of the shape of that blade, um, I think it's probably it's probably the best. Now that the, the uh, this uh, an OCC tool, an OCC this is an OCC and it'll roll. It's going to roll pretty well too because um, it's also got that a little bit of that roundness on the. Um, you know what I'm talking. You you know what I'm talking about, Doug. But it's what I, I'll tell everybody else what I'm talking about is if it's if it's completely a single bevel blade 
where it's completely flat from here to here, um, it, it's not going to roll through the wood as well just because of the shape. It, it's so flat, there's nothing to, to help it roll. Um, if it's got a little bit more of a curve on the on the sharpening of the blade, it'll roll e a little bit easier. So there. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Any other questions from the group as I'm going along trying to salvage your face here? Okay, I am, I'm going in, I'm, notice I, I left plenty of wood for her lips. Um, plenty of wood there for her lips. And one of the mistakes that, that people make when they're carving females is they don't, they don't leave enough wood for the lips. And you got to be careful with, you got to be careful with these smile lines or these folds because um, they can age her really quickly. And for a ballerina, if, for a ballerina, I hate to say it, but if you're 30 years old as a ballerina, you're pretty much over the hill. Uh, most of most ballerinas are, um, and I may be wrong. There may be a ballerina in the group, and I may be wrong and be you're offended. But from what I've seen, um, it's a young girl's game, and uh, like like in your 20s. But uh, maybe you know, maybe if you're a a freak of nature, you can dance um, into your late 30s. But um, so we got we want to make her look. We want to make her look, oh, she's she's got her first roll in the nutcracker, so we're going to make her look probably mm, 18, 20, 20, 18 to 22, something like that. Okay, I am, I am. Uh, let me show you how I'm putting in her lips here. The, the more shallow of an angle that I go this way on the lips, the bigger, the more full the lip's going to be. If I go a pretty um straight angle in i'm going to get chicken lips on her if i can go a pretty shallow angle on on her i'm going to get fuller lips and it took me a, a while to learn that um to do that shallow angle to give her fuller lips um and you know the the younger we are the fuller our lips are some people even pay to get uh, imp uh glycogen implants on their lips i always think i was my wife says i would have been a good plastic surgeon and uh, I don't know if it's too late to go back to school to do it, because I think that would be a kick to do plastic surgery. Uh, I'm going to go underneath the bottom lip here, and I'm going to take that chin back just a little bit. So I'm just starting to make those lips work. I hope you can all see that. Um, so with the, with the questions that I asked today in the class, I don't know if any of you guys came up with any revelations as you were answering that those questions, but I would like to just tell you that you are in control of what you're doing with this hobby. You're in control of how you spend your time. And if if you find joy in collecting knives and collecting tools and people rib you about it and give you a hard time about it, it's your business. You enjoy it and keep doing it if you enjoy it. Uh, heaven knows you're keeping our, you're keeping our knife makers happy and, um, and, if you enjoy collecting other people's carvings, if that's something you enjoy, keep doing it. Um, I've gotten into that lately. Um, I hadn't been into really into wood carvings, but you know, I hit the lottery this year at our CCA carving exchange. Every year we exchange a carving, and this year I got uh, Dave's Dave's um, sheriff. Uh, can't remember his name, Dave. Anyway, I I have spent a lot of time looking at that and I've got some I've got some great carvings from great people and if I'm ever sitting down and watching a movie they'll usually come and sit and watch the movie with me so I can so I can study their work I love to collect and if you love to collect then by all means do it as a former mechanic I am a tool collector you know Terry I have found that that um that your type the former mechanics they love the they love the tools and they they love the talking it sounds like a new uh, like a new hammock bar fly. <laughs> yes. There we go. Kind of showing you what I got going here now. Um, got to bring the. I've got to bring the uh, sides of her face in a little bit. I got to get serious here on this girl. This is where these adjustments are going to make or break beauty. And there's a certain point where if she ain't pretty, she's not going to get pretty. And I'm getting to that point. So. Um, I'm coming in here 
to define the upper lip and separate the lower lip, taking out a little chip, little chip right there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, taking out just a little chip right here. And then the upper lip, the upper lip is generally wider than the lower lip. So I'm gonna take out some, this is a pretty important part. I'm gonna take out a little chip here of the lower lip. And this is stuff we'll go into detail in the class talking about the anatomy of the lips. These little chips, look how this brings this to life. And so many people wanna make them, wanna make their caricature smile too early and save the save the making her smile until the end and it'll it'll make her lips fuller so now i'm going to make her now i'm going to bring the lips up and make her smile okay. bringing that corner up you see that i'm going to do the same thing on this side bring that corner up making her a cute ballerina like i said on your first first one or two or five ballerinas you can uh you can um just do kind of a round face or a generic face until you get comfortable and then when you want to start putting in some details on that face you can there we go now there we go that's the button that's up. sure kind of starting to get a little bit of cuteness in those lips other questions from people out there, other other thoughts. You guys carve females, have you tried it? Is it something you're you're afraid of? Is it something you failed at? Is it something you do well? <laughs> hey Ryan, somebody's wanting you to show the uh, close up details of the face. You can hold it up close to the camera again. Okay. Let me get let me get her looking a little bit better. Give me a little bit, just uh, we're I don't I'm I'm uh, not crazy happy with with her yet. We're working a little bit more on symmetry, but I'll show you what I've got so far. Kind of getting that lips, the lips set up, that turned up nose. Now the hey, Ryan, eyes. Take, Ryan, take yeah, your glove ahead. away from that if you don't mind, because it's focusing on the intricacies of your glove. Oh, okay. So get more on her face. Nope, it's not helping much. <laughs> and we can see it well enough. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to take a little bit more uh, a little bit of wood out from her eye socket here. Let's see, let me get up here so we can all see. And I'm using just I'm using a number nine, a small number nine to do this. And uh, I like these I like these little stew buys. It I just with my gouges with my gouges just quality steel. Um, like it's like everything, you know. It's 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 all about quality steel, and then from there it's just how it's sharpened. And I really don't I really don't care much what I hold on to. You know, you see. A lot of these, a lot of my tools, I have carved faces on. I, I got, I asked for these, I asked for these tools for Christmas, and then my my wife came down on Christmas night, and I was sitting here carving faces on all of them, and she said, "I'm doing carving your new tools, faces of your new tools," and I said, um, "Nobody will steal them this way. Nobody will accidentally put them in their toolboxes." So yeah, um, what I'm saying is, it doesn't really matter to me much what I'm what I'm holding on to now. If I'm pushing them, if I'm really moving a lot of wood, um, I don't like to. I don't like to uh, have have anything carved on the handle because I'm putting more pressure. Some of my bigger gouges. Maybe that would be a fun class sometime. Show you guys how to carve some faces on some of these things. Probably a lot of you already do it. Okay, so I put in some eye sockets. What's up? What's your favorite knife length? Do you vary or just stick with one for the most anything? So I I typically um, I'm between an inch and a half and two inches. Um, really, 
doesn't matter that much in there. Um, just just somewhere in somewhere in there. So I've got a little bit of an eye socket, and I wanted to leave quite a bit of mass for the upper for the upper lid. Gosh, I'm having a hard time letting you see all the details. Um, I need to I need to rest my brain for a second before we come up and finish these eyes. I'm going to show you how I set in these legs, and then we're going to show you how I sharp these hands. So Ryan, the legs, you might also get some better detail if you uh, the wood chips behind. Uh, it's trying to focus down on that too. Sorry. Yeah, let's see if that helps. He's trying to help you out, man. Yeah, I know. I appreciate it. It's good. Okay. Um, we're gonna set we're gonna set up these legs here. Um right straight down the center, in the front and in the back. And I'm just gonna take uh just gonna take a V tool, come up and separate the legs. Fairly simple. We're not we're not gonna go too much, we're not gonna do too much detail on the legs. Just we just want them long and slender. And where she's on point, we don't have to do it keeps us from having to do anything with toes or ankles. Um, we're just keeping it, keeping the legs pretty stylized. And then, and then I look at the profile, the profile and the front and, and get those legs so that they, so that they really blend in with the body. Let's see. Let's go. Looking at the profile. Yeah. We need to pull up, take a little more wood off up here. Um, and, and so, um, maybe try some smaller ones too. I did the very first one I did of this, um, was for the, in the CCA, we had a, we had an ornament, um, we did an ornament project about five or seven years ago and I did a, this bigger one. And then I had to, I realized it was bigger than what we were decide we decided to do. And so I did one about half the size and it was a lot of fun too. So try doing a big one and a small one. See what you like. I'm going to round the toes just a little bit. Take just a little bit off the toes and round them. So, and then when I when I draw the when I draw the shoes on, we're going to put we're going to put these ballet slippers like this. So you see it's got kind of that toe there. Going to do that on both sides. And then she's got those, the, the ballet slippers have the little wrap that will, that will wrap up the leg and will kind of cross. You, you see how that, it's like a little ribbon that crosses up the leg. And so um, something like comes from here And then goes goes up this way, and then we're going to go from the center, go up on the other leg. My point with all of the questions today, my point with all of the questions is to um, we don't have a lot of time on this earth, and we don't have a lot of time to do the things that we love. And so, when you're doing the thing that you love, do it in a the very best form for you. And don't think that just because somebody else does something some way that that's the way to do it. Um, everybody has different things that they love to do. They prefer to do. Um, I have found that I love two things. I love creating projects that people can do. And I love going and teaching people how to do them. And then I love carving by myself. Um, I found that I don't enjoy, I don't enjoy um, socially, just sitting and carving. Um, I do enjoy teaching a class. I love that. Um, but I, and I love, and I just love teaching, but what, find out what it is that you enjoy and then do it. Um, next, I, I just take a little, a V gouge, a V, v tool, a little V tool. And I, 
and I will come up along these lines and just just set up that the the ribbons on our legs. And I won't go into that because that's pretty easy for you. So, and then the same thing with the ballet slippers. And when we paint it, you'll do the I, I did I did the tights white, and then I just did the ballet slippers in a paint. I set up her hands a little bit better so you can see what I did. Um, I want to put some I want to put some thumbs in. You can see how I put these thumbs in. Fairly simple, fairly stylized. So I'm going to just come at an angle, kind of angling down, go in and roll up. I'll show you how I did it on this one. Did that on this one. Come in and just roll up like that. And that's just kind of setting up some thumbs. And then um, come in here and clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to separate separate the thumbs just a little bit. Make them look like thumbs. And we can we don't have to put in a whole lot of detail there. We can we can use our imagination on that. And then um, bring that bring it down so she's got some wrists and shape that forearm. Let's take a chip out here to separate that arm, the body a little bit right there. And I'll do the same thing on this side, just separating the separating the body from the from the arms. I like to con I like to control my shadow. So I'm gonna put I want a little more shadow right down in the crook of that elbow. I apologize. This isn't my best um resolution that I've got. And it's, I, I usually set up when I do my classes, I set up in the workshop, but I I wanted to be in the kitchen today so I could be with my family today. Since I'm officially not working, this is this is just playing today. Today we're playing. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna angle this and see I do a lot of roll cuts with these ladies. I, I curl it, I curl it a lot. So I've set up those hands, setting up those shoulders. Now, again, curling up to the neck and flowing to the neck like this. And then and then once I get that neck, the shape that I want, I will, and the body, the, the torso, the shape that I want, I'm going to show you what I'll, <clears throat> what I'll do to put her clothing on. It's not here. So she's got right here. It comes fairly low on her back, like this, the green, and then it angles up along the side, and then it comes right across here. I didn't do any straps over the shoulders, just to simplify, and then angle back. So I'm gonna come up here, like this, straight across, angle down, like that. And then in the back, I'm gonna come down this way and up. If any of you guys want one of these ballerinas, let me know. I've got a few of them laying around. We can figure something out. Okay. I got, I got, uh, bringing that down, kind of showing the back and then, and I will just use like a, I'll use like a, uh, just this little V tool, come up along the side here. Sometimes people go so thick with clothing. Um, and after we, we are, we're always we have to be reminded how how thin the clothing would really be on that uniform. I mean, just just scratching the surface and taking out a little bit. We don't have to go too crazy. Now I'm gonna I'm going to separate the arm from the body a little bit more, right here. Kind of got a mess down in here. getting some of that cleaned up. Okay, let's see where I'm at here. I've got the leg set up. I've got that skirt flowing. I've got the arms. There, there will be, I won't do it today, but there'd be some cleanup on those arms typically. Um, the hat set up, the, the brim of the hat set up. Um, I would, when I go for the, when I go to the, um, the fur on the hat, I would just use a, I would just use a, a small number nine. And I just go in and just 
and just pop it out like that and and get some get some um get some profile that'll really that will really take the white dry brushing that will really uh when i dry brush it, it'll look it'll really work um anyway and then the and then the eyes um i don't know that i'm gonna have time to get in on the eyes how are we doing on time blake we're sending about uh 10 after four ryan so uh start wrapping up in probably the next 10 minutes or so okay well let's see if we can't do something for you here do some eyes for you okay One of the big things is getting the profile, that profile set in, and getting that, getting that nose so that it, it, it smooth, smooth swoops up to the forehead, um, so that we can do, so that we can do eyes. Then I'm going to um, here on these, keep them fairly simple. What I did on these eyes, all I did was, I came in about I mean I am literally that that carving is literally about an inch away from my camera I, I mean my camera just seems like it's not my most powerful camera I've had um, and I'm going to you can see I'm going in there I'm going to make a little cut down in there kind of angled and then I'm going to go up to it, take out the wood, going up to that. See? And then I'm going to come in and angle down into the nose. I don't know if you can see that. Choose a small one. And then I'm going to round to that eye, keeping it fairly, fairly simple. And the paint, the paint really can do a lot. The paint will really, let's do it again on this side so you can see what I'm doing here. So, and I like to do the, I like to do her right eye first so it's easy for me to match this eye. There we go, I started up in the corner. And we can do it up to that. I'm going down to the nose. Now I've got to even them a little bit. This size a little bit. There we go. It's starting to look pretty now. And a lot of that has to do with symmetry. Symmetry is so huge on, on beauty. And she's got those high cheekbones. You can see that I came in, that I came in under here and gave her, gave her some pretty high cheekbones. Okay. Um, and then after I get that set in, it's a matter of just going through and, um, and just rounding and putting detail. Um, I would, I would, um, on the hat, to make it look like a chancellor's hat, I would come about here and put a, put kind of a crease about right here and come here with a V tool to make it look like that hat is just flopped over. So I'm gonna come in with this V tool. There. Come on with that V tool there to make it look like that hat is being flopped over. Let's see how that made it look like a hat. And his hat, and then I would put fur texture on the ball, and I would put fur texture on the top, and then when I'm all done with her, um, I put a little bit of a, I put a little uh, Christmas hanging ornament, and a little ribbon on it, and um, and that's about it. Um, give you one more picture of the some of the finished. These are some of the gals that I've done, and then this one I did with braids, actually he little bit of a variation she's kind of an elf she's got she's got elf ears she's got she's got some braids i didn't do braids because they they take quite a bit more work. and then here's what we worked on in the past hour um 
tough to do a whole bunch in an hour, but there you go. So we would love to see your ornaments. Um, post them when you get them. When you get your ornaments made, whether you do them with a face or round them, um, we would love. Thank you, Cheryl. We would love to see your ornaments and and post them and let me know. Um, come join us in January and and uh, I and if there's any questions, um, hey, thanks, Mark. If there's any questions today, I'd love to love to take some questions while I'm not trying to carve a small female face. Oh, thanks, Gene. I'm glad you appreciate enjoyed it. My computer barely has bad resolution. Can you post some pictures? Um, um, we, we can see. We can see what I ha I've got time to do today. It's a it's a kind of a wild, busy time of year for a choir conductor. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. We we this is oh, thank you. Um, Fabio, are there any, any questions? Hey, Ryan, I got one for you. This is Scott Shelton. Hey, Scott. I, I don't, uh, how long have you been carving? I, I, I haven't uh, talked to you or, or heard anything from you about how long you've carved. Huh? How long has um, it been? Let's see. I started carving, Scott, I'd say about 33, 32, 32 years, something like that. I've been carving since oh. I was, um, um, since I was 17, 17 or 18 years old. Um, wow, well, so, that's great. Yeah. yeah, I've been been doing it, been doing it a long time. I've been doing it really seriously for about 20, 25, 25 years, really seriously. So very awesome. Who, who got yeah. you started? Um, well, I was carving on my own a lot, Scott, and just having a ball on my own. And then um, I, I, I was able to take uh, gosh, my brain is not working right now. I was able to take some of my very first classes. At, they had a, they used to have a, a rendezvous roundup type of a thing in um, Twin Falls. And um, I, I took some classes over there in Twin Falls from, you know, Dave on here is one of my early teachers. Um, but there were a number of teachers at that that I, I went every year and got started. I took, I studied with Marv Kreiser sat a ton. And, um, uh, but, but with, with all of those guys, um, really there's, there's five or 10 or 20 of them that really got me started. Very awesome. Thanks buddy. Yeah. Thank you, Scott. All right, Ryan. Well, we're coming up on about 20 <laughs> after, um, yeah. I just want to say, say thank you for coming on, demonstrating today, sharing your work. Um, you're always welcome here. So we appreciate you taking time out and uh, sharing with the group. Um, I will encourage everybody sign up for this class January 6th uh, with Ryan Olson. I've taken several classes with him. Uh, what you saw today is just a little, a little taste of what he's going to show uh, in these classes. And you'll have the opportunity to do several, like he said at the beginning, uh, you'll learn, you know, how to set everything up. Uh, his mentality as far as symmetry and stuff like that. And uh, it's really beneficial if you can get into the class So make sure you try to do that. Um, just want to say that, again, we won't have any meetings until uh, January the 6th. Um, we hope everybody has a great Christmas, a happy new year. We appreciate you all joining us throughout this year and uh, spending time with us uh, on Saturday afternoons. Uh, we know it's not the best time, but uh, hopefully our best time of the day. Uh, but hopefully you've been able to gain some information from us through the year. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all in 2024. Uh, and again, Merry Christmas to you, Ryan. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you all uh, next year. Thank you all. Hey, guys, it's Blake Lunsford. And I'm Dave Levy. And I want to just thank you guys so much for the uh, great 2023 we got to have with the International Association of Woodcarvers. We just wanted to come on and wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all in 2024, where we are going to be sharing some great woodcarving content with you. So uh, make sure you join in on Saturdays. Uh, we'll be coming to you live. Perfect. Some perfect. That too low, was that too low energy? And Blake, you remember to unmute, so that's good. I did. Thanks. Yeah. All right, I, I appreciate the reminder though, because sometimes you know it happens. The brain, the brain tells me. Works. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bob Happy New Year. <laughs>